you know, that was uh, expert testimony right there that you just heard because um, in Annapolis what we've been seeing is um, a trend towards, it's kind of obvious at this point after you heard that presentation, to cancel school discipline. What they really want to do is cancel SROs. Um, there was a lot of pushback on that for obvious reasons, so now they're just trying to cancel school discipline. Um, and on my, uh, I think it's Mark Fisher uh, YouTube channel, I took the entire video of the debate of the bill um, so that people could actually see it. Um, and if they, if they actually had an opportunity to see what was happening on the House floor and you watch this, you would just, I mean, you just wouldn't believe it. You just couldn't believe it at all. Um, and I think that that bill was, where'd my papers go? Did I take yours? I think you took mine. <laughs> <laughs> I'm looking at yours, I'm like, wait a minute, none of this looks familiar. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> yes. Nice. Oh, that's your. Oh, cool. All right. So, um, it was House Bill 84, and it's the, that's what Marion was talking about, among others, which is, it's a bill that basically says that the superintendent can't call the police to take a kid out of the school if the kid's acting up. And by acting up, I mean completely and utterly out of control. So, this is really worth, by the way, Violent. I mean, a violence. They, yeah. they cannot remove this violent kid from the, the school. And so what is the teaching moment? What is the teaching moment to the student, right? No matter what the background of the student is, there is no teaching moment. So that's what we're saying. We're saying we're not going to ever teach them that there is a consequence for their action. Um, and obviously, I voted against that bill. But you, if you were to go to the Mark Fisher YouTube channel, you'll see that debate. You will get really angry when you watch this debate. You'll watch what some are saying on the House floor. Um, sorry? Resetting. Well, okay, cool. And so I think I'm up now to talk about, um, <laughs> Jim called it, they're teaching what in sex ed? That's what he has on his stage here. So the reason why I'm talking about this, folks, is because I get emails from teachers. Um, and sometimes it's phone calls, also about CRT loop. And here's what they always say. I'm terrified of giving you this information, but I know that I can trust you. Please don't tell anyone where you got it. What kind of society do we live in when the people that are teaching our children are terrified of telling us what's going on in the classroom? And so they were sending me these PowerPoint presentations, and I kept trying to vet, well, is it real? Is this really happening, or did someone just pull this out of the sky and they sent it to me because they found it on some other school system? So. There was a bill on the House floor within the past week, House Bill 194, which said that they want to give the State Board of Ed the right to develop curriculum for sexting. Now, if you look at what we're teaching already in human health uh, classes, um, what's the proper term of that class? Um, it's the human health class, usually it's ninth grade, but it's throughout school. You would say, well, what are they going to teach them about sexting, right? Um, and based on what they're teaching them now, I'm kind of worried about what they might show them. So in House Bill 194, the bill came to the floor, and we offered an amendment. And the amendment was, beginning in the 2022-23 school year, a county board shall require each public school in the county to post prominently on the school's website the family life and human sexuality curriculum for each grade in which the curriculum is taught. That curriculum is not transparent in the classroom about what we're seeing. Um, that was the amendment. So we had a debate on the amendment. The amendment failed. Here's, here's what I said on the House floor. Thank you, Madam Speaker. I have a question for the floor leader, please. Floor leader. It's my understanding that this well thought out amendment is nothing more than providing to the parents the opportunity to look at the curriculum that their children, their children are being taught. What's the problem with the amendment? The committee has not heard testimony on this. We have not discussed this and we just received it. So you need testimony to give parents the right to determine will, what is appropriate we will hear for their a children? Built we will hear several bills. Thank you, I appreciate it. We will it. hear several bills in the committee overviewing parents' rights. Thank you, on the amendment, Madam Speaker. There is on, no, on the amendment. On Madam. the amendment. There is no more important issue in the United States of America today than what's being taught to our children in public schools. 
And this state is no exception. In Calvert County, for example, we have parents who are organizing and have been organizing for well over a year and a half ever since COVID started, and they finally found out for the first time what their children were being taught in public schools. And yet, the Democrat Party doesn't want to pass an amendment to a bill to allow parents to know what their children are being taught. That's shameful. Absolutely shameful. Here's a slide that I, that I received from parents in Calvert County, mothers, by the way, mothers. Human sexuality, the sexual tree in Calvert County. There are three levels of sexuality, and there are 45 plus different elements. And they have a picture of the tree, and one of the elements is abortion. It's the first one. It's the first one. Do you think? Sorry, this is a, a visual aid. Hope it doesn't trigger anyone. Do you think? Do you think that if parents saw this, that maybe some in Calvert County might want to not have their children receive this material and take this particular part of the course? Yeah, it's more than some. It's a lot. Literally thousands of emails from people in my county complaining. Thousands. And yet, the Democrat Party, which I do not understand, has decided for whatever reason that it is wrong for parents to be able to see what their children are being taught online. That curriculum can't be published. That somehow, you, the Democrat Party, take precedence over parents. You do not. Parents are first, always. So, Madam Speaker, for all those reasons, I rise to support this very common sense amendment that for the first time in Maryland, puts parents back in charge and lets them know what the curriculum is that their children are learning. Thank you. Because as parents, I know we'd all agree on that, right? We don't want our children to, to get pregnant in high school, obviously. We want them, that's what I thought was being taught, but no, they're teaching skin hunger. What the hell is that? <laughs> I didn't go to school, I guess, but I know I didn't know you are talking about. I was, I was afraid to look it up because I thought, you know, I'm edge I thought that Facebook would retarget me. That would come up on Facebook, you know? Like, exactly. You like skin hunger. <laughs> I don't even know what this is. Consent activity. Um, oh, here you go. Consent activity. What style of pizza do you like? What size, crust, sauce, toppings, where you get this pizza from? How we, now, let me ask you something, ladies and gentlemen. If I pass this outside, if I pass this same flyer or a series of flyers to children outside of Starbucks, I would get arrested. My opinion that is not appropriate. But here's the thing, we are a community, and as a community, we should have standards. And if we had an active school board, and we had more parents like you, we could push back and hold the superintendent accountable. We could hold the individual teacher that decided to put this out there to account. Um, pizza, yeah, it's like. So that gives you an idea of what's happening. Um, so you can see why that amendment on the House floor was so important. So important. And that's the kind of fighting that we have to do, right? And it's interesting, as I said before, because when you do that, so often people don't see it. They don't have an opportunity to know how you're having these arguments and how crazy things have gotten at our, at our state and how crazy they've even gotten here in Calvert County with the school board and the superintendent. And so as long as we keep working together and get people into office who want to be responsive, and we need you guys, we need the parents, the parents are, should be first in all this with their children, to help us, to help us fix things. There's a lot to fix. So with that said, we have one more person before we go to the panel for questions, Q&A, and I just want to recognize, because I didn't recognize him earlier, my good friend, Jesse P., who's running for State Senate of Maryland. Jesse, stand up, just so people can see.
Next up, she's running as a lieutenant governor candidate. I want to introduce Jordana Chitadella.